Well, hello there, Merton. Hi there, Tom. So, I'm glad you could join us today and do this interview with me. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So, how did you hear about light therapy? How did that happen? Well, it was exactly one year ago. Oh, was this, it? This very month that uh, an old friend of mine who was also an old business associate called me and said to me, um, Merton, have you ever heard of red light therapy? I said, no, but I've heard of the red light district. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Different type of red light. <laughs> Different type of red light. So, so we both laugh, of course. And then he explained a little bit of it to me as to okay. how it's supposed to work. And he said he had um, one of the handheld devices. And one of ours or somebody else's out there? Oh, one of ours. Yes, okay. one, one of ours. Yeah. And I said, oh, okay, um, it's something that uh, sounds like I would like to be able to use and see how it works on my body because I've got a body here with all kinds of um, shortcomings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so he promised me that he would let me have it, but someone had it at that particular time. Right. And he kept promising and it never came. And that was what a year ago. So I never got to be able to f find out who did the um, equipment, nor how it works or anything. Right. Two months ago, my finger started to hurt really bad because of an accident I had years ago. I have calcification and arthritis and all my joints all over. Right. And my finger on the right hand wouldn't bend. The fourth finger wouldn't bend. So I went to my family doctor. Sorry, that'd be your pinky or? No, the, this, this oh, one that, next, okay. to, the, next there you to the pinky. He's counting the thumb. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but in the x-ray, actually, they said the fourth finger that I was surprised too. So. Oh, all right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought these were the four fingers, but uh, <laughs> you never know. So I did that. Yeah. And by the way, I have a copy of the x-ray. Okay. Um, so I, I'll give it to you, all a right. copy okay. of, the, of the report. Okay, thank okay. you, thank you. Yeah. Um, so my family doctor sent me to physiotherapy mm -hmm. to look at the finger and work on the finger. And I went to the physiotherapy for about oh, almost two months. No result at all. It didn't help anything, mm -hmm. all the exercises that they gave me. But the last day that I went to the physiotherapy, when I left the physiotherapy um, office and I went to my car and turned on the car, my car was on WDCX. <laughs> and right at that moment, the last two minutes of the program was coming on. And he mentioned something about light therapy. Was that when I was being interviewed? You were being interviewed by Nibor. Right, 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 in yeah. Buffalo. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, Buffalo, New York. And I, and I heard the last couple of minutes, and I said, oh, that sounds like what my friend was telling me about. <laughs> Maybe I should listen. but. The program was finishing, but he mentioned that the following Tuesday there would have been a, um, a webinar. Yes. And I wrote down the, uh, um, the, the, the website address, and the following Tuesday I watched the webinar. Okay. So that's how I got involved. In and, and I sent you the information about my body. Right. I showed you all the different parts of it that uh, had a problem. Right. The very next day, you called me. <laughs> and I said, hey, with all these things that you've got here, we should be able to do something for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so, so even why don't you we, come down sometime? Even if we only got through a quarter of them, you'd be feeling better. Oh boy, <laughs> you just know. one or two would be great. Yeah, yeah. So tell me what happened in your life that you ended up uh, getting into physical problems? Well, I was in um, sales. This okay. is going back to 1993. Okay. And I was on the road quite a bit. So pretty much 30 years ago. 30 years ago, to, exactly. Okay. Because it happened November the 6th. Oh, 1993. wow. Okay. All right. okay. So 30 years ago, so I'm now going heading into my 31st year. <clears throat> so I was on the road and from best I could tell from the police report, because my mind, my memory for that day is completely gone. Mm -hmm. because of the accident and, and brain damage. Okay. Um, I was traveling in London, Woodstock to be exact. Okay. And got into... London, Ontario. London, yeah. Ontario. Yeah. Yes. And got into an accident. Mm. Uh, there were two accidents in one, mm -hmm. one after the other. 
first, I was overtaking this other guy that was on the road and the, the weather was a little bit bad, snowing a little bit and slippery. And he got concerned and scared because the guy was passing him. He thought I was driving too quickly for the road conditions. So he braked so that he would allow me to pass faster or sooner. But because he braked, his car swerved and oh, no. his front bumper hit my back bumper. Okay, and put you in a tailspin then. Right. But that was, quote unquote, minor because you just had the vehicular accident, um, damages. Okay. So we pulled over on the shoulder to exchange information and to look at the damages. So while we were both out of the vehicle and I was standing on the shoulder, another truck came along, according to the police report, and the truck came, lost control of... of, of In the, the same driver, area. Same area, lost control, came on the shoulder of a 401, we were on the 401, right. and struck me. Whoa. So when I got hit, I was outside of the vehicle completely. So I got the full force of the, of the And the engine. other guy managed to miss that? The other guy didn't get touched at all. Okay, well you yeah. were taken out. I was taken out. So much so that when the ambulance came, they couldn't find me because my body was in the trench under some bushes. So they, they came, they found me eventually, and then on the road, on the way to the hospital, I went to Victoria Hospital in London. Yes. On the way to the hospital, apparently, from what they said in the report, I was still conscious because I was joking around with the. Um, yeah. <laughs> All busted up, I'm busted joking. up. <laughs> but joking. I don't know what I was joking about, but hey. <laughs> However, by the time I got to the hospital, yeah. I was in the coma. Okay. okay. You're, okay, so yeah. now you're in a coma. So in the coma, and the doctors are saying to each other, he's not going to make it. You Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear that. Okay. Well, I didn't hear that. Unfortunately, I was, I was totally out. Yeah. No, but you're <laughs> coma, but sometimes I've heard people can hear things. Yes, I've heard that. Yes, yeah. I've heard but that. Good I thing did. you didn't hear I that did, because right. you didn't need to hear I that. I did not, no, especially since my brain was already in la-la land. Kind yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. So they told, um, they, they sent for my wife because we were living in Toronto at the time. Yeah. And they sent for my wife and she came down <clears throat> and they told her there are too many internal injuries. He's not going to make it beyond 24 hours. Wow. So you're going to have to pull the plug. And my brother came as well. He, he met my brother some okay. time ago. He came as well. And between the both of them, they said to the doctor, no, we are not pulling the plug. We don't want you to pull the plug. Whatever God intends to do, yeah. we'll let him do it. Right. Yeah. Let God. Let God decide what happens. And they right. refuse to pull, pull the plug. And I was in the coma at that time, as I said. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they expected that by the next day, you were gone. I would be gone. But by the next day, I was still there. God had other plans for God you. God had other plans. <laughs> okay. Six weeks later, so I was in a coma for six weeks. Six weeks later, um, someone said they saw a movement. Somebody came to visit me and said right. they saw a movement of my finger. And they told the doctor. The doctor said, oh, no, that's just your imagination. That is maybe just a reflex reaction. And see that he's totally gone. He's mm -hmm. But meanwhile, they're telling my wife, pull the plug every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. And when they finally came out six weeks later, they said, OK, strange enough, he is out of the coma. However, we have done brain scans and he's brain damaged and he's going to be a vegetable for the rest of his life so you don't want your children to see that you have to feed them so why not pull the plug oh wow so wow. they were still in that pull the plug train however again my wife says if i have to feed him for the rest of his life leave him there yeah. And here I am. Wow. Now, you, I imagine um, you're part of the Christian community. Yes. And you had a lot of people praying for I you, too. Lots of people praying for me. Uh, uh, so much so 
that when the members, some some of the members from my church came down to um, to to Victoria Hospital, the staff didn't know what to do. There were literally dozens and dozens of people. <laughs> For this guy who doesn't know he's home, <laughs> he's got visitors coming out of his ears. <laughs> and they didn't know what to do because the, the people are all over the place. You know? And um, eventually they had to have some kind of a, of a process by which a few go in at a time. But at that point, they were saying, they told me that I was under the bed and I was bigger, literally bigger than the bed because I was so swollen. Mm. And um, the doctors were having tubes all over. She said there was, my family told me, there was not an area of my body that there wasn't a tube coming out because of all the electronic monitors and everything that um right that they had right do. what kind of damage is in the body do you <clears throat> do you remember the brain is damaged right physically literally um when i got to the hospital there was severe internal bleeding so the doctors at that time thought that it was the spleen so they went in to my stomach give me surgery and remove the spleen so i have no spleen okay and by the way at that time they thought that the spleen wasn't really very important uh, important <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of like the appendix it wasn't important exactly, exactly. now we learn it's and, a self-starting me restarting mechanism yeah, there for, you go so then, then they found out that the spleen is is that which helps the body to fight off different infections in terms of what happened. right so, so you a, made it through all that. I made, it, I made it through all that. So I have no, I have no spleen. <clears throat> but what they found out is that the blood was coming because both pelvis were broken. Okay. And that's where the blood was coming from. Right. <clears throat> so I have no spleen. And what I found out, maybe almost six weeks after the, I came out of the coma, because six weeks after I came out of the coma, they sent me back down there to Scarborough General Hospital. Okay. And it's there that I found out that, because I went to do bone scans. I had to do bone scans every, every two months or so. Right. And the first bone scan I did, the technician said to me, <clears throat> did the doctor ever tell you that all of your ribs are either broken or cracked? <laughs> I said, no, nobody ever told me anything. And she said, didn't they put anything of a brace on you or anything? I said, no, I never wore any brace or anything. And she said, you survive all of that with no brace? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing how the body how God, I believe God designed the body to heal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because she said, but all of them are broken or cracked, but don't worry about it. They're healing themselves. Yeah. Exactly what you, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly what you just said. <laughs> it's, the body is absolutely miraculous. Uh, any absolutely. part of the body, whether you're looking at the hand, whether you're looking at the foot, whether you're looking at the eye, whether you're looking at the ear, whether you're mm -hmm. looking at the tongue, I mean, uh, the brain, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. All these very, very well designed parts of the body all come together perfectly. True. True. And then you go and mess it up by standing on the side of the road and, and, <laughs> and asking a truck, to come a, truck. And, a, a truck to come and hit you. <laughs> so, so, so while in the coma, apparently, I was getting um, blood infections okay. over and over. So I had numerous, numerous rounds um, of antibiotics. Had, not only that, um, transfusions. Okay. Because they needed to purify the blood to keep it from really going. Okay. Wow. And wow. So, um, and I lost. My my wife always teased me. I said, "You, you are walking around with a whole lot of other people's blood. You don't even yeah. <laughs> you don't, you don't yeah. even have You've been own. washed clean. <laughs> you don't even have your own with blood. everybody else's blood. Yes, yeah. 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 so many transfusions. 
but um, through it all, the Lord was good. Yeah, the Lord was good, and I also found out that while in the coma, I had a severe heart attack. Oh, we'll just add that to the that, next, that just, why just, not? Just, yeah. <laughs> and later, my family doctor said to me, the only reason, one well, the only reasons why you're still alive is because you have a very strong heart. Mm. Because when you had that heart attack, it was massive. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah but we, we know God will take, will keep you going no matter what, yeah, right. regardless yeah, of right. what people yeah. say. That's right. Whether they yeah. want to pull the plug or they don't want to pull the plug. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember my, uh, my uh, sister-in-law who um, went into diabetic coma and they said there was no hope because all of her blood condition, I mean, her, she had 6.68 as a pH on her blood, which is really, really bad. She had um, her body temperature had dropped to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, there was just a whole host of problems and said that she's not going to make it through the night. Mm. Well, I rallied a bunch of people to uh, I texted. I think it was well over 40 texts to people that I knew. And I just copied and pasted, copied and pasted saying my sister in law needs their prayers. Mm. And she made it through the night. That was the first amazing thing. Uh, her body temperatures came up eventually and all the other things that they were trying to do. They really, um, with everything that they were trying to do to, um, to get her going, I mean, they did, they got her through the, the most difficult part. Um, they had needed to, twice they had to resuscitate her mm. um, because uh, uh, when she came in. Um, and so she got through all that. And then very early, I think it was a day or two later, um, it still was a very sad, sad occasion. So to see her in this kind of right. condition. Right. And I, don't, I, I just think God once in a while drops ideas in our brain. And in my mind, I, all of a sudden it came to me, tickle her feet. Oh. <laughs> Okay. And, and I mean, you gotta, you know, everybody's pretty glum around the uh, around the hospital bed, and I'm thinking, tickle her feet. Okay, well, let's just see, you know. And I tickled one foot really aggressively, and all of a sudden, she yanked that foot up. Oh, and wow. then she, uh, I tickled the other foot, and she yanked that foot up. And and uh, they said, ah, oh, it's just a a, a little bit of a, like a reaction, a, a re reaction a you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, but in reality, um, it gave us all hope to see her. There was something going on yeah, that there yeah. was still, you know, the body mechanisms were still there. Right. And eventually <laughs> we saw her where she started. Uh, you saw the eyes starting to move a little bit and then eventually starting to follow us mm -hmm. in the room. And um, now they said she would probably be a vegetable um, because of the super condition she was, bad condition she was in. Right. And it was six months later that she drove to my facility. Here. Oh wow! <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and there was a lot of people you, praying you mean for. There was a cabbage driver. <laughs> yeah. No cab drive. No cabbage. No. Oh. Yeah. Vegetables. Yeah. No, no, no. She <laughs> drove on her own. Uh, yeah. She was insistent and she drove on her own, came over here for, wow. I forget what it was, but uh, uh, yeah. So we saw that answer of prayer and that, mm -hmm. that was a lot of prayers for her. Yeah. And um, she ended up um, getting totally out of the, like totally back to normal pretty much. And it wasn't until um only recently about a year and a half ago that she um um she had another diabetic episode mm -hmm. and that uh, um it was shortly after the uh, v shot um that she mm -hmm. um that mm -hmm. she uh, her blood sugars went out of Ouch. out of control Ouch. so um anyways that's uh, mm -hmm. that uh, so these things happen yeah. but tell me what's happened now with uh, your your I, I, but when, when I came out of the coma, the first yeah. time I came out of the coma, I experienced the most frustrating time of my life because my nerves were shocked and I had no control at all over my movements, 
Wow. And so, just, you know, you guys didn't see this, but he just walked in the door here. I mean, you can move your arms around yeah, and everything. Because when I, my nose was itching at one point. Right. You could try to scratch and my hand would go back here and my hand would go over here and I couldn't find the nose. And it was extremely frustrating. Mm. And that was the most frustrating time of my life, not only because my hand um, coordination was gone, right. but also I couldn't talk because I had a tracheotomy. Oh, yes. The tube was in my throat, so I can't talk and I can't write because they brought a slate for me to write to tell But you can't me, write. But I can't write because my hand is going all over the place. So the nurse that was assigned to me, um, she was trying to, to find out what's going on and how I felt. So she said, um, are you able to sleep at night? I said, no, I, I can't sleep. This is coming out of the coma. And for the first six nights after coming out of the coma, I couldn't sleep at all. So all during that time, she was trying to communicate with me. So she said to me, when you can't sleep at night, do you come sheep? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm trying to respond to her together to understand what I'm saying. I said, no, I don't come sheep. I talk to the shepherd instead. <laughs> and, and she couldn't figure out what it is I was trying to say until one day she finally figured out by reading my lips. And she ran all over the hospital telling everybody, oh, he says he talks to the shepherd instead of come to sheep. Yeah. And that was one big thing there. Yeah. But it was the good really shepherd. The, the good, good shepherd. shepherd. Yeah, yeah, through these difficult yeah. times. Amen. That's Amen. the way we can make it through Amen. is, uh, is uh, praying and yeah. ask God for help and to get through. I remember when my wife was so ill uh, for so long. It was she was bedridden for almost a year and a half, and we had young kids, mm -hmm. and I was trying to look after that, trying to be Mr. Mom, and trying to run a business. And uh, oh my gosh, that was hard. That was really, really hard. And we didn't have two. We were away, quite a distance away from my parents, so uh, and her parents, so it wasn't. Mm -hmm easy for this, right. them to come over and help. So um, it meant that we, we were pretty much quite a bit on our own trying to get through this. But we got through it and uh, my wife, I, we're married now 42 years. Okay. We, yeah. uh, and uh, so we've made it through all these difficult days. Um, yeah, so uh, tell me about how did you end up with the, uh, like, okay, so you heard about us with the light. So what happened then? Well, you invited me to come down. Right. And I came down, uh, I believe it was the same week. Right. And you asked me, they well, asked me on the phone when you called me at first, with all of these injuries, which three would you prefer to tackle first? Because <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, too many, they're too many to do the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so You're a basket case. Yeah, basket case. <laughs> there you go. So I told you my head because of the brain injury. And, and subsequent to that, I had a severe stroke. Okay. So I told you my head would be one of the first areas I want to tackle. And, and my back. And I also told you my my arm, my right arm, right, because I can't use my right arm. Yes. And the, the yeah the reason why I can't use the right arm is because as as I said, they were thinking that I wouldn't live very long. So they didn't, so they do, didn't the do the things, any anything that, or anything to so you ended things. up with calcification <laughs> yes, in, your, in your elbow. I ended up with calcification in the elbow, right in the elbow joint, calcification in the knee joint, so the knee couldn't bend either, so that was straight. And some of the fingers on my right hand um, started to also calcif calcify. Along with that, the fingers and the toes because the, um, the, the blood and the oxygen weren't going there because it gave me very strong medication to put the blood, push the blood and oxygen to the brain right. while I was in a coma because they didn't want the brain to die completely. Right, right, right. So because of that, nothing was going to the extremities, to the toes and to the fingers, and which means that they started to die. Mm. And it got gangrenous. Whoa. Now all my toes are amputated, so I have no toes right now. Mm. Okay. Now, with the calcification in the elbow and in the knee, I got surgery about two years after. 
Okay. The knee worked fairly well because the knee is a very simple joint. But the elbow didn't work because the elbow has to do with the pronate and the supernate, as they, as they call it. Right. So the calcification came back and it froze. Mm -hmm. So right now I have an elbow that's straight, even though they did the surgery to take the bone out. Right. So when I came to your place, okay, I tried the helmet for the brain injury and, right. and for the brain fog and what have you. And at the back of my eyes for the last number of years, there was a very strong pressure and there's always pain at the back of my eyes. Right. When I tried the helmet, I think it was three minutes. Yeah, a one minute of the red and three minutes of the near infrared. The near infrared. Yeah. Immediately, the pressure behind the eyes was gone. Oh, beautiful. Immediately. That pressure there. The um, fog and the lightheadedness was still there, but I believe that is an ongoing thing that we can get rid of. Yeah, with, uh, or, with or, some time. With yeah. some time. Yeah. Okay. So that was the first. Um, okay, so the notice. brain stuff, and then you, you use the light for some other areas of your body? I use the light, I use the handheld. Remember, I mentioned to you that I was going to therapy, physiotherapy, right. because the finger wouldn't bend right. at all, even after the physiotherapist did it for right. three weeks or whatever it was, still wouldn't bend. I came, I used the handheld, I believe it was a super bomb. Right. And I used that for about five, five minutes or something yep. like that. Or both. Yeah, the, red uh, and near infrared. And near infrared. Yeah. And immediately the finger started to bend. Yeah, so show not the finger. Not, not But I did it some more after I, I used right. your equipment. And now? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Bend completely. And it hasn't done this for almost 30 years. <laughs> so even something that old of an injury still can be helped exactly. with this. Absolutely. And we've seen that with one individual who 20 years earlier had a stroke and had inability to speak clearly. He did the helmet and one treatment the next day he was able to speak clearly oh, again. Wow. Oh, so wow. it's yeah. possible even old injuries. Yeah. I had another indi individual, he came in limping. Um, he had, um, 19 years ago, he had an injury, injury to his ankles, um, uh, broke his ankle, something happened and whatever, but for 19 years he was limping. Mm -hmm. And the crazy part is I think it's kind of like in the nerve bundle, there might be almost like a sliver in there and you mm -hmm. can't move without pain okay. because of that one thing. And he treated himself for like 10 minutes or so on that ankle. And that was the last time he had pain oh, and wow. <laughs> limping on that on that foot. So it's possible even old injuries. Yeah. So what other things have you been treating on your body? When I came, that first time as well, uh, one of the areas that I said I wanted to have you work on for however long as possible, my lower back. Okay. And because you did the canopy, right? I did the canopy yes yeah, the larger canopy the, 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 yes the, the, um, the full canopy yeah okay i call it the flat bed <laughs> the flat bed <laughs> no that's what hit you <laughs> true, true. <laughs> no but the, the flat bed yeah so this is the canopy which uh for those that are wondering i'm just sorry i'll just bring that around here i'll try not to hit you but that's the uh, can uh, the mini canopy and you can see how large it is and then the canopy is six of those over top an area well you see the mini canopy up here dem demonstrated in use but that's what you went under and that's what happened, happened from there i went under that and i stayed under there for i don't remember how long it was maybe probably about, about 10, 10 minutes, minutes yeah minutes 10 minutes so, of yes. one and 10 minutes of, of the other wavelength right. is yes. what i would yes. say Right, so I did that. Normally, prior to that, when I sit for too long, either sitting regular okay. in a chair or whatever, or if I sit driving going anywhere for too long, I would get back pain. Okay. Back. And then by the time I get out of the vehicle, the first few steps I have to walk bending over. Okay. Because my back would be hurt and I can't straighten up immediately. 
when I came that day and I went under the um, full canopy, yes. when I left her, I don't know, half an hour, hour later, and I got in my vehicle, driving back to Toronto. Which is two, a long, two hours. Two hours, okay. two hours because the traffic was bad <laughs> yeah. that day. So it took me two hours driving back, unable to stretch my legs or my back or whatever. By the time I pulled into my driveway at home and got out, and stepped out of the vehicle, out of the car, and walked. After a couple of steps, I went, wait a minute. I didn't walk bent over <laughs> after two hours of driving. Yeah, and driving or sitting for that length of time is, is really rough yes. on anybody yeah. with back pain, for right. sure. Exactly, but the, the, the pain was gone. The pain wasn't there. Isn't that? The oh, that's beautiful. There. Beautiful. Excellent. Excellent. So have you had a chance to treat any other areas of your body? Remember, we got 99 places to treat <laughs> on this plane, on this spell, on Merton here. Uh, so have you treated some other area? Again, because of the accident and the nerve problems, I have ever since then had numbness in both my feet. Okay. okay. And um, all during the day, my feet would be numb, especially the toes. Well, where the toes used to be. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> would be would be numb. I use that um, the handheld. Yes. Because you are kind enough to, to um, let me have it for a couple of days. Yeah. And I appreciate that very much. And I use that, and I would say 60, 70 percent of the numbness is already gone. Wow. So I can walk now without my feet feeling numb and I can be able to tell that my feet are touching the, the floor. And so neur neuropathy is, neuropathy is, is, is an is, issue. It can be really bad. Yeah. And in this case, you can turn help turn it around. Yes. And where particularly were you treating with the light? In the feet. And, okay. Right down to the, um, by the instep. So okay. By the instep and to the toes. Right, right. Did you have... Uh, did you have damage there as well from the accident? Or you yes, I, I did because okay. again because of the nerve damage. Oh, and, and then also and the blood, the the blood re flows. restriction, the blood right. and everything the blood else. Not as and that would cause the blood to not be able to flow properly right. in through the feet, and right. that caused all sorts right. of problems. Exactly. I remember I also had the gangrene. Yeah, which caused the toes to die, so that created another problem as well. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, I had uh, one woman who was 92 years old and she had an operation on her spine um, and it was like five years earlier. And I asked, um, it was she, she mentioned about the fact that she had numbness in her, uh, like neuropathy mm -hmm. in her one leg. Mm -hmm. And I said, when did, you know, she says, where do I treat, you know, do I treat the feet, you know, or mm -hmm. where I feel it. In this case, it was the right thing what you did when you treated the feet because okay. that was the origin, originating problem. Okay. But in her case, I, I thought spine. Hmm. Mm, and it happened after the spine. So I said, look, treat, look at using the light over the area on the spine. Okay. And uh, she did. And what happened was in a few days, the neuropathy was gone after treating her spine area oh, wow. where the surgery was done. Oh, wow. So you sometimes can feel something much lower in, in the body. Right. And yet it's uh, it, the, the, the source of the problem is up higher, you know, whether if it's a problem in the in the foot, it may be back of the knee could be or could be the knee could be the, the hip could even be then of the spine itself. So mm. it's a case of uh, Mm -hmm. trying to figure those things out so right. you did figure things out as you used yeah. it trial and error <laughs> yeah trial and error some trial and error and it uh and it's helped you all over um, yes so other is there any other uh, well we start we got 90 99 minus three or four, four. we got <laughs> we, we got 95 left to go <laughs> uh, but uh, any other top things but that you found yes because as i mentioned my right um, arm doesn't bend, the elbow right. doesn't bend. So, which means that restricts my use of the right arm. Right. Which also means that it um, overuses the left arm. Right. 
So because of that, I develop arthritis in arthritic conditions in my left shoulder and in my left elbow, which sometimes can become extremely painful and can't. Right. Uh, which concerns me very much. It right. used to concern me very much because my right arm can't get to my face yeah. slash mouth. Right. To feed myself. Oh, and so if, yeah. And if my shoulder is doing the same thing. <laughs> you, you can't get there. I can't get there <laughs> one way or the other. Yeah. So, um, the very and I don't know what it is. We like to eat for oh, some reason. For some reason, you know, yeah, yeah. it's a bad habit. But you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I started to, when I came to see you, I wasn't able to use the, the um, mini canopy on the shoulder right. because of time and what have you. But when I got the, um, the handheld. Pump. Yeah. I, and what um, he's talking about is one of these devices. And it was the super palm, I think, was it? Yes. Yeah. So it's one of these devices. This happens to be the ultimate, but it's got the light, and you were just using that on the shoulder, on the like shoulder, that, in yes. different spots yeah. along the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. With, 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 with a little bit of difficulty, because again, I you, can't oh, use you, your, I can't, Yeah, just I can't. use your right arm. No, I can't get there. How right. do I get there? I can't use the right arm. So, <laughs> right. so when I. I'm doing it, I have to do it with the same left arm. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time I'm finished doing it, then the elbow <laughs> is, is hurting because I've been bending it so close. <laughs> oh, no. so, so that's an interesting thing. So I'm looking forward to sometime be able to put the... The mini, mini canopy, so it makes it a lot it easier. makes it a lot easier and would go deeper than the handheld. Right, right, right. So right, looking right, forward right. to some, some respite. Yeah, in yeah. That area. Well, this has been fantastic to hear your journey, and and I think we could carry on for the next fifteen yeah. or more minutes just on. Yeah. But I so much appreciate you sharing with us how the journey that you've gone, and it's pretty neat to be able to help you at this later point in life. Um, you know, uh, with and I, uh, Merton, how old are you? I am seventy four. 74 yes. and uh, to be able to help you in this later part of your life and be able to now get those shoulders moving and yeah. and, uh, yeah. and uh, it's elbow a and it's a blessing. yeah yeah and, uh, and and if you don't mind it may let me ask you a question sure um because as i told you before that the um, technician told me all my ribs were punctured and collapse yeah but were punctured and the broken rib punctured both my lungs. Oh. So my lungs um, punctured, collapsed, and I had to be under oxygen right. for, for months. So my question is, would either of these be able to help my lungs to repair because yeah. I'm losing? Um, yeah, so you mentioned Neil Braun earlier that you heard that um, that interview. Right. Um, and in his situation, now, and this is tying in with the lungs. Okay. Um, I had first COVID um, and I had really bad lungs. I had double lung pneumonia and my oxygen was 80%. And um, I went into the hospital and was diagnosed. They had x-rays. And the best thing that happened is for some reason they kicked me out of the hospital and uh, I was able to use the mini canopy on my lungs. Okay. Now my wife helped me because I was not, I had severe brain fog. I had different, I wasn't thinking clearly, but at least I could use the mini canopy on my lungs front and back. And I spent about 10 minutes of the two wavelengths on my front and 10 minutes on the back of the mini canopy. Uh -huh, okay. And within, within two and a half weeks, at the two and a half week mark, I got coughing so bad, I couldn't stop coughing. And I thought, Oh, my gosh, I must be getting worse. I, I don't understand the body that well. And so I went in, I went into emerge, and they did another set of x rays on my lungs, and they checked my blood and they checked my heart and everything. And they said that the the heart was fine. They said, everything's good there. Your blood work is good but your lungs are excellent Oh wow! <laughs> in two and a half weeks. So the reason I was coughing was because my body now was trying to clear out 
all the stuff, everything that was there. Okay. So they got a chance to see my better lungs already just because of this treatment. So when Neil, I know this is a roundabout way to come back to your answer, but Neil um, uh, Boron, I had heard that he was, he was not at work. He was not a, uh, he's a talk show host on on WDCX 99.5. And um, he um, was doing rough at Herd of the Sun. They had asked for prayer for him. And he was running around with an oxygen bottle because his blood oxygen was 80, 79, 80, just like mine. Okay. And, but he had been, I, he had had the COVID prior to me and still hadn't come out of it hadn't improved. Mm. So here we're talking, uh, you know, I went through two and a half weeks. So I think he was three weeks and he was still at 80%. And that's really bad condition. And he was doing the, 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 the blood oxygen, oh, sorry, the running around with the oxygen tank when he could, I say running, walking and barely walking. And he told, he had the same stuff I was dealing with where you go up two, three steps and you feel like you've just done 200, mm-hmm. you know, the fatigue that you had and, and the energy level. Anyways, I, I heard about it and I got him. Uh, so I, I talked to him and then I got him, I asked him if he was willing to treat his lungs for like with a smaller device, you know, for like 40 minutes, every, three times a day. And he said, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So you use the 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 two wavelengths, the red and the near infrared, like on his on his lungs like this, and then on his, his wife would hold it on his back and do that, and they did do that three times a day, and his blood oxygen in a few days started going up, mm-hmm. and quite well. As a matter of fact, in three weeks he was back at work. So he said immediately the amount of energy that he had, everything was improving within a few days of treating both sides front and back with the smaller device. Now the mini canopy is just covers like you see in this uh, upper picture here, it does a large area so it can do everything in less than 10 minutes on the front. But with the palm light, you're going to have to spend a lot more time to try and moving it around in that. So an answer long in the long answer to your question is, do I think it can help lungs? We have been able to see that um, for people with COVID, uh, which is injury to the lungs is what's happened with people that have long COVID. There is like injury, there's scar tissue, there's different things. And they've been able to improve by using light technology. Okay. So near infrared is particularly important. So most of the time you would have used the eight ten nanometer setting on there for treating deeper in the lungs with just a little bit of the thing. So a little bit of the red, bright red. So in answer to your question, yeah, okay, um, right. this can help your lungs. So there's it's hope going for my take, lungs. Yeah, there's hope for your lungs as well. Okay, good. All right, we'll get you doing the marathon next week. <laughs> 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 no, but in reality, it's going to take some time. Okay. You know, um, you know, two months from from where you were. Now you're much better. Oh, a whole lot better now. Yes. Yeah, and I mm-hmm. think we can help the lungs as well. Excellent. And um, so, yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Merton, I want to thank you so much for sharing your testimony today. This has been fantastic. Thank you. And just to see how God's brought you through all this. Amen. It's pretty neat. Yes. Thank Thank you, you Merton. Thank you.